Hi everyone, welcome to Brilliant Kapta. Today we have a very special student with me, Mr. Trivikram Sunil. He was a part of Brilliant Integrated Program for the past two years. He has completed a grade 12 board exam and got selected to many top universities in the world with a ranking less than 50 for computer science. And he has scored an amazing score of 1550 for SAT and got 95.2 percentage in the CBSE board examination and also cleared the JE main examination. He is with us to share his experience for the past three years of his journey through Brilliant. Welcome Trivikram to Brilliant once again. Thank you, sir. Trivikram, can you share your experience with Brilliant for the past three years? I think you started his journey with Brilliant in grade 10. Yeah, I did. Yes. I started my journey with Brilliant in 10th uh, grade and once I finished 10th, I finished it with 95%, I decided that I really wanted to study abroad. My aim was the top universities for computer science abroad. So I joined the Brilliant Qatar Integrated Program. And uh, there I had the best teachers I could ask for and all my, all my academic needs were handled in the morning itself. So I had my CBC preparation and SAT preparation all done in the morning and I could focus all my time in the evening for uh, my extracurriculars, which really helped me in my ad admission. And so I, I ended up like, my academics were really good. So I got a s score of 1550 in SAT. 1550 out of 1600. It's an amazing score because hardly children get 1500 above. Again, once again, congratulate for you that one. Thank you. Sir. And also, you have an amazing score in grade 11 and grade 12. What is your score in CBSE grade 12? I got 95.2% in grade 12. 12, okay. And so I got 97.6. Okay. So these two SAT score and CBSE board result help you to get into this one, the top universities. Yes. And one more thing, which all universities are you got offer? So I got offers from quite a few universities. And um, I, I got, I heard back from, in Singapore, I heard back from Nanyang Technological University, NTU. NTU from Singapore, yes. then? And it's, it's one of like, it's the top 10 in the world for computer science. Oh, NTU is the top 10 in the, for computer science in the world. Yeah. Congratulations, and Thank then? And then I also heard back from Waterloo, which is very esteemed in the CS field. Yeah, and Waterloo in Canada? Yeah. Okay. I also got a $10,000 scholarship from University of British Columbia. Oh, British Columbia, you got selected and you have a scholarship of $10,000. Yeah. Okay. Congratulations again. And finally, I'll be heading to the US for Penn State University. You decided to move to? The US. US yeah. and Penn State University for Computer Science. Yes. So that is the final decision. So, but you have offer from all this university, top ranked university. So, in 10th, when you came to me, I know your parents and you, mainly your aim was into Singapore and then you got in Singapore and then shifted to Canada and now finally you ended up in US. US. So, all this you are able to achieve, the admission. So, but finally you decided. So, I, you know, when it comes to 11th standard, Preparing for CBSC, SAD, JE, also you have got a good score in JE. I got, yeah, 1.4 percent. Yeah, that means you have qualified JE and definitely you'll be getting a seat in NIT also if you want. Yeah. Yeah, so but you don't want to go to NIT. US has been my dream, so. So yeah, your yeah. dream was, your passion and dream was computer science in the top university, so you're not going to NIT. Yeah. Okay. So, what are the main things which helped you in getting admission into the, in this whole process okay so one of the key things is academics definitely and brilliant color has done me a huge favor i've had the best teachers my academics were pretty much sorted with them so, so you don't have any problem in achieving the cbsc or related things no actually it was it was very helpful with them okay okay then preparation and, for and obviously it, it, with the foreign universities extracurriculars are key i mean you could have all the academics in the world and if you don't have extracurriculars you won't get it so the time in the evening, you, I had to use it for things I was interested in, public speaking, MUNs, and uh, things related to my field as well, computer science. I attended workshops and programming competitions. Yeah. And some passion projects as well. I was also a TEDx speaker. A TEDx speaker, you have done TEDx speaker and you have done an award or mention in the MUN in Georgetown University yeah. many times. How many times? I think I've got uh, five honorable mentions. Oh, five honorable mentions in MUN. Yeah. So this all maybe helped you. And the parents who are watching us, they you have to understand any top university, 
the number of seat if there is 100 seats or 50 seat at least a thousand application will be there and all will be having excellent academic qualification so how this process of selection will be based on the non-academics first thing is this is a entry level criteria academics along with that one you need to spend you need to have a lot of extracurricular activities and achievement so really if your academics in cbsc or the schooling is very good then only you can focus for extracurricular in the evening and uh, holidays so in that case you are safe very much yes very much okay so trivikram you know most of the university's application and admission complete is before our 12th standard board result come so can you brief the process to the people who are watching us yes sir sure so essentially the application windows there are two kinds of deadlines one is the early deadline and the other is the regular deadline the, first, the early deadline it starts in pretty early in august or latest by september and it closes by the end of november okay and then after that you have another deadline which starts around like mid december to january and then closes around march this is the regular deadline Okay. So for both of both of these, they'll get over before a board exam, like you said, sir. Yeah. So, um, what the materials you'll need is documents. Your, what you need is yeah. Yeah. Uh, your essays, first of all. Personal statement. Mm. It plays a very crucial role. Yes. It should be very well crafted. Very true, sir. Each each uh, university they ask you write like multiple of these personal statements. I mean, there's one single personal statement for all of them in common which you apply through the common application, which is a platform. Yeah, okay. And then each university itself, they have their own set of questions, which you would write long paragraphs and essays to. Okay. It's all to gauge your personality, which is one thing that foreign universities really look for in your application. Other than that, they look for recommendation letters from the teachers and your predicted scores, since you won't be finishing your boards before your application is after. So they'll need something to gauge your academic performance with. That's your predicted score. And of course, you'll need uh, something for English proficiency, like IELTS or TOEFL. Okay. And your SAT scores. SAT score. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think since you were an integrated program, you got everything on time. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I've uh, heard like horror stories of people getting it very late. For me, with the brilliant Qatar integrated program, my recommendation letters and predicted scores and any of the materials I needed were all on time. So I all didn't on have time. Much so you don't have any tension about that one. Yeah. And SAT also, there is no tension. Yeah, just the essays. Okay, essays, yeah. Long. Okay, you only did the, your personal statement very strong. Mm. Okay. Thank you for giving the information to the your juniors and hope many of the students also make use of this process and help them in the process of getting admission. And now, as a final thing, do you want to give any message to your juniors? Actually, yes, sir. Absolutely. So everyone, uh, my first piece of advice to you is start early and be consistent, be it with academics or extracurriculars. The universities need to see that you have a good performance and then you can keep it up or even improve it. So preferably an upward graph or even something consistent is fine. In 9th and 10th, you need to have no, a percentage that has to be above 90% to have a chance at admission. And in 10, 11th and 12th, you can maintain that or preferably even improve that. They really need to see that you're good at what you do, academics. Then comes the extracurriculars. Find your strengths and play to your strengths, but don't be afraid to explore other options as well. So everyone's good at at least something. Maybe it may be the arts or the sciences or public speaking or even sports. So focus on that and make sure you're really passionate about what you do, what the extracurricular you do in that field. But explore other interests as well. Universities need to know that you're not a one-trick pony. It's not just one thing you're good at, that you're willing to try other things, but your core strength is just one thing. That's what they want to see in an applicant. An applicant who can manage school and their interests side by side. If you start in just 11th or 12th, they know you're doing it just for, just for university and they can see right through your application. So start early. This is a good advice. You have to start early, maybe in grade 9, achieving or getting some certificate of curricular or curricular activities. Okay, that is a good and uh, I think it will be very useful for the students who are right now in grade 9 and 10. Also in 11th. Okay, thank you very much Trivikram for coming and giving us this testimony and a piece of advice for our juniors of grade 9, 10 and 11 and 12. And wish you good luck and all the best.
Thank you. Brilliant Qatar, your trusted coaching partners with 10 years of excellence in quality training.